Hello. In this particular video, we're going to go through section 8.3 of the OpenStax textbook, which explores the idea of conservation of momentum. The textbook will be used to introduce the idea of conservation momentum. Examples for how to solve problems using this principle are in various videos of Heath Hatch solving problems listed on your reading guide. So, momentum, like energy that we've already talked about, is an important quantity because it is conserved. At this point, you should understand what conserved quantities mean in that they are the same before and after some interaction. A super common use of the idea of conservation of momentum is when looking at what happens when two objects collide. So many of the problems for which we will use momentum, we will be discussing the collisions of objects. 8.3 is a very nice example of this particular idea. Another important concept for the idea of both conservation of momentum and conservation of energy is the definition of the system of interest. Now, in the universe as a whole, both energy and momentum are absolutely conserved, as far as we know. However, the problem can come when you break off chunks of the universe and analyze just parts of it. If you analyze just parts of it, then you might see things where it looks like either energy or momentum is not conserved. For example, if you were looking at energy and you weren't paying careful attention, you might miss some of the energy leaving what you were looking at as heat. And if you were naive, you might think that energy was not conserved for that particular reaction. But what actually happened is some energy left the system due to heat. The same is true with momentum. Momentum can leave the system and get missed if you're not paying attention. So it's very important to define a system of interest and be careful with how you define it so that you make sure that you catch all the momentum in the system. So the idea of conservation of momentum actually comes from Newton's third law, as evidenced here. So Newton's third law is really just a statement of the conservation of linear momentum. This derivation here may prove useful, but I will not exactly test you on it. The main thing I want you to take away is that Newton's third law and the conservation of momentum are the same thing, and that for an isolated system, you're going to have the total momentum be a constant. The momentum before and the momentum after be equal to one another. One important thing about momentum is that momentum, we can see, is a vector, as referenced by their bold face in the text, which means that is conserved along each direction independently, x, y, and z. So momentum can be conserved in each direction independently. This rocket example is a good one because it lets you see that for the system of interest of the rocket, momentum is completely conserved horizontally, but is not conserved vertically because of the action of an external force, namely the force of gravity. This is really all I want you to read for this particular section. I want you to get a feel for the idea of conservation of momentum and how it connects to our other ideas of Newton's second law, shown here, and Newton's third law as demonstrated on the previous page. Again, some examples of how to use this particular principle to solve problems are given in some videos of Heath Hatch solving problems listed on your reading guide. This concludes this video.